Okay, so this is the controller for a big metal bending machine, a proper expensive one, and it's gone blind on one of its input, namely the input that uh, takes care of a uh, rear facing limiting for a mechanical arm that moves back and forth, uh, meaning that this thing cannot calibrate itself and uh, it's basically useless. You can run it manually, but uh, that's not why you buy a really expensive metal bending machine, you buy it for the automatics. Uh, so uh, this uh, box I've had a look at uh, before, the owner complained that uh, a 24 volt output was missing, uh, so I just very quickly revamped the 24 volt supply circuit uh, without uh, doing too much checking and uh, that wasn't the issue, he had just measured it wrong, but 24 volt was probably there all along, although we can't know for certain. Uh, what we do know is the 24 volt is there right now and it's still blind on the input. So I have been to the site where this is installed, we've checked the limit switch that it can't see and while the switch is dodgy, it's a kind of high resistance-ish, the output does go proper low and it won't respond even if we short uh, the two sensor pins together. Uh, so I am quite convinced that we do have an issue inside this box, all the other automatics work fine, uh, it's not brain dead. Uh, so I think perhaps we have uh, something like a dead optic coupler, a dead transistor or something inside. Uh, since I know that the switch that the particular input is hooked up to has been a bit dodgy, it can go kind of half on, half off, uh, I have a bit of a theory and that's that perhaps uh, the optic coupler has been kind of triggering-ish, it probably doesn't have a Schmidt trigger circuit of any kind, so it could potentially get stuck in a half open state uh, where we get a reasonable amount of power actually being dissipated in the optic coupler and they don't like that. Uh, if it's uh, designed as an on-off circuit it could have a reasonably large current flowing through it, so having it uh, sit in the linear region of the phototransistor it's probably not a good thing, so I'm suspecting we're going to find a dead opto or something along those lines inside this box since we're just dealing with a single dead input. Uh, but uh, yeah, we need to take this thing apart right away and see what's up. And there we have the innards exposed. So uh, here you can see the reworked part, the uh, voltage regulator where we have a couple of LM317s on the bottom side of a PCB uh, and they've got new caps and new regulators installed and I have little doubt they work just fine. Uh, so in taking this apart I had an immediate aha moment. Uh, I don't think it's going to be the issue that's causing this thing to malfunction but uh, a keen eye will get you far because that plug is not inserted properly. Uh, it's probably not, it's probably been fine since, uh, that was probably fine before he actually got it to me, but uh, in reinstalling it, uh, that plug hasn't been inserted properly. You can see it just popped out, so we probably had a few bad connections there. We, when the customer was first in, he just brought uh, the, the, this PCB, he didn't bring the entire box. So that's worth noting. So yeah, just wanted to point that out because uh, that's the sort of thing that gets you. Okay, so uh, to make this a bit easier, we actually have some documentation on how this device is supposed to work. And uh, this is one of the connectors on the back of a magic box we have right here. Uh, so we have figured out on site that uh, this is the switch that uh, is not working as it should, the end switch for the big mechanical thing. Uh, so if we have a quick look at this uh, sadly German stuff, we can see that it's going in on pin 10 there and uh, just the switches over, uh, bridges over there to the plus 24 volt output. So essentially we're looking at a uh, an input on pin 10 here and I happen to know which one, uh, which connector this is thankfully. Uh, that's supposed to be uh, low uh, when the switch is not active and uh, high when it is active. So just 0 volts, 24 volts logic, very simple, brutish stuff. 
as uh, we know what to look for. Uh, it's a voltage dependent, uh, probably going through resistor straight into the optic coupler. Uh, so now the next step is going to be to see where this connector is on the board and uh, see which uh, piece on here it actually goes to. Okay, so here is the board and uh, I happen to know that this is the connector we're looking at and from the documentation we also knew that the plus 24 volt output is pin 1 and here we can see we have a fat trace going to an LM317 circuit here uh, denoting pin 1 essentially. So we have pin 1 here, we know the input from the documentation is on pin 10, so that's over there. Uh, so this is going to be our input that isn't working, so let's just uh, beep it out and I've already done that and basically by just randomly running my probe over all these uh, input looking things we finally find that uh, I'm getting a phone call. So uh, it is uh, quite uh, reasonable to assume that the issue is going to be either this circuit or one of these parts around here since they're just the closest to interfacing with the long wires and stuff that go to the switching question. So this is where I'm going to start troubleshooting. And the first step is finding the data sheet for this part to figure out just what it is. Probably an opto. And doing that was not the easiest thing in the world, but uh, the chip is labeled QTC2730 and most of the internet seems to suggest it's uh, the same as a HCPL2730 which is a dual high gain Darlington opto coupler with a rather intimidating internal schematic. Uh, however, uh, this should be rather easy to test since uh, I know how to pair this entire device up and uh, we know that this, uh, the, caf uh, the inside or input side is connected pretty much straight to the input pins on the back of the unit. So if we fire this up, we should be able to uh, flick the output on this circuit. So we have a Darlington coupling. These are run off of a five volt rail, I believe. So we're gonna have five volts at VCC ground there. And we have a Darlington uh, coupling, which is triggered between VO1 and VO2, yeah? So if we energize this LED, uh, we're gonna get uh, an output here, and if we adjust this LED, we're going to get uh, an output there. So hopefully, we're going to be able to see that uh, these outputs do not change uh, compared to how the input is set, and uh, we're ready to just remove the opto, uh, replace it with a new modern HCPL2730. Probably redo all the optos in the device since one has failed and uh, this thing is going to be good to go. But yeah, the next step is going to be to try and fire this up and see if we can swap the output. Okay, so we have some kind of test setup set up here, right here. So since I have a presence of mind to take a picture of the original install inside of the machine, we've got a proper testable mains uh, power thing going on. So this is uh, running off of 230 volts AEC and I've rated out V2 wise we're concerned with. So uh, one of these is uh, the plus 24 volt internal rail, the other one is the input for the switch that isn't working. So uh, what we're gonna do is flip this over and uh, see if we can uh, change the state of the outputs of this IC by shorting these wires together with a crocodile clip. Okay, so we're ready to power it on. And it has some slide power consumption at 5 watts. And all the power rail LEDs are lighting up on the other side of the board. So we should be able to see uh, some voltage being generated. We should have a voltage 24 volts-ish across the output. So that's good, we can flick the switch. So let's see uh, what the uh, output states of the uh, suspect opto are. We do have power supply. So output 1 is 5 volts, output 2 is 5 volts. So let's see if either of those change when we flick our switch. Still have power supply, 
5 volts and 0.14 volts. So I was hoping to see no difference at all, but we do have a difference. Uh, that output is uh, clearly changing states. And that's turned into 5 volts again. So it might not be the opto actually. That is a clear state of change. What a bummer. That's not what I wanted to see at all. Well, this went down shit creek mighty quickly. Uh, as you can see, I've taken the board out of the frame uh, to inspect uh, stuff on the underside because I checked out all of the optocoupler inputs and they all work fine. Uh, and to boot, all of them go into uh, these three big uh, 68,000 series uh, interface ICs. Uh, and that's all they, all they do. So uh, the, the issue is either going to be the optocouplers, the input ICs, or uh, the CPU on the CPU board or something of that nature, uh, or an intermittent contact somewhere along the path. Uh, so uh, what I've done now, since we really can't properly diagnose further, uh, since these uh, ICs just spit out data, I tried to scope it a bit, but uh, to get any sense of it, I'd need a proper fancy scope, which I don't have. Uh, so what I've done is I've uh, reseated every IC in the entire machine. Uh, that means taking each one out one at a time, putting some uh, isopropyl alcohol in the socket and putting it back since uh, ICs in sockets are notorious for causing issues of this nature. Uh, and I've furthermore uh, resoldered a shit ton of stuff basically at random because uh, there were a few joints, most of a big board, which seemed to be slightly questionable. Uh, nothing uh, which would uh, suggest that uh, uh, soldering faults were uh, have ever been a major issue in these in this, uh, and uh, it is a double layer board with plated through holes. So solder faults are very uncommon unless we're dealing with stuff like this, which sees uh, considerable thermal cycles and thermal loading. You can see some of those uh, components, those are the input circuits for the optocouplers, have been running uh, somewhat warm. Uh, but uh, uh, while that does look horrible, uh, I have actually tested every single optocoupler input and they all work fine. Uh, so that's not our issue. So I spent just a few few hours just redoing a bunch of solder joints. All of the joints for these uh, 68,000 series uh, interface ICs have been redone. I've checked the, the three relays, which are relay outputs from this, from this board. I've taken over relays, tested those, they're fine. That's also a common issue in industrial gear uh, relays that just don't see enough loading uh, to last, essentially. They don't, never see a spark, so they oxidize over time. Uh, but sadly, no, no, no issues like that. I've rocked all of these adjustments, which is a bunch, and put them back in the original position because these also, sometimes in older gear, uh, this thing dates from 1990. Uh, but, but they tend to get a bit derpy over time and sometimes they go bad and uh, don't make a proper connection and uh, whatever they're supposed to be programming doesn't program properly anymore. Uh, so at this point, I'm really leaning towards the issue being one of the big 68,000 series interface ICs. So to see whether or not that's the case, I have actually, if you see those pink dots on them, I have uh, rearranged two of them. They are three identical units, uh, and uh, the one with the issue the middle one, uh, that's the one that interfaces with the input that's not working properly, has been moved and swapped with the one at the bottom. So if there's an issue with those, or with that particular IC, we should now see a different symptom when we put this thing back together. Uh, but uh, uh, it is a bit of a shame I don't like doing troubleshooting this way, uh, because we have not found any definite cause of issue. Uh, I cannot with any certainty say uh, what's causing this machine to malfunction, and that is, uh, that's bothering me. I hate it when this happens. I was quite sure when we started this uh, that it was going to be an opto. 
uh, because it showed all the prerequisite symptoms of having an opto failure with the uh, switch that was intermittent often causes opto failures and the input being dead despite the rest of the machine working fine. But alas, uh, life isn't always easy uh, and I'm gonna have to put this back together and make the one hour drive back to the customer to reinstall this board, see if we can do some more on-site troubleshooting if it doesn't work and uh, yeah, go from there. Hopefully we're gonna see a different issue at least and uh, I'm gonna have to order one of these uh, 68,000 series interface RCs, but uh, we'll see. This could also be fixed. I have done a lot of work. Also replaced a few dodgy caps. Uh, there were two of the blue tiny caps of this board, I threw them away, you can't see them, but they've been replaced, they measured bad. Can we fake this stupid thing? They measured bad and there was one uh, electrolytic, actually, uh, right by uh, the 68,000 series into his RCs. You can see uh, the new brain cap there. Uh, that was an electrolytic, so it's been replaced. I don't think that can be an issue. The power supply was very, very clean, uh, but uh, it's probably there for a reason. So, yeah, there. Uh, Time to put this back together and uh, hopefully just put it back in the machine and it's going to work. But I don't think so. Well, hi, future FF here. We've gone to voiceover. So after returning to the site and installing the box back, uh, it did not work any better at all. The machine still saw the same exact issue as it did before, which is that uh, a mechanical arm that moves back and forth uh, would just run full speed to the back of the machine and uh, stop only once it reaches the emergency uh, threshold switch, which stops it from mechanically damaging itself. So the machine would still not see uh, the switch in question, it just ignored it. Uh, so we're setting to dig in into the documentation and I had a think. And uh, I figured the machine probably has some way of figuring out where the position of that boom arm is uh, aside from just the switches, it has to know how far it's moved the arm. And if the counter for where the arm is, isn't working, then it makes a lot of sense for the programming to ignore the limit switch. Because if the programming knows that the shaft isn't turning and the arm isn't moving, then it has no reason to consider the fact but the arm might be moving because it no it isn't. So I sat down to chasing and looking around the machine for any uh, rotation sensors, any pulse sensors, stuff like that attached to any shafts. And sure enough, hidden un under a cover on the uh, main big AC three phase motor, there was a pulse thing, a magic pulse sensor. Uh, and uh, once I took that apart, it, sure enough, there was a broken solder joint. The thing wasn't getting any power. So I just prodded it with a solder joint and bloody hell, the machine started working just fine. And that's been the issue all along. A bad solder joint on the pulse sensor. Uh, so we set about chasing around the soldering iron around the, the local area with <laughs> finally managed to borrow one from the neighbors uh, because I wasn't prepared to do any soldering, I didn't bring one. And uh, one uh, rather dodgy solder joint with the most ridiculous giant uh, soldering iron and 1.5 millimeter solder uh, we had, uh, the machine worked a treat and uh, we got it running just fine like new. And that's a happy end. Uh, all is well, that ends well I suppose. Uh, it's a bit sad that I still have to bill the customer for all the work I did, chasing a red herring. Uh, but uh, it uh, was not obvious at all uh, that uh, the issue would be that since we couldn't figure out it, it had the pulse thingy to begin with. 
but uh, in the grand scheme of things, uh, I didn't put that much work into it. Uh, the customer was very happy, and now he has a very well renovated magical box that's definitely not going to fail any time soon. So, with that, I suppose the lesson to learn here is uh, measure and troubleshoot and think before you just assume the big magical electrical box has failed because uh, it's always <laughs> it's always either wiring loom or sensor faults the vast majority of the time when you have when you suspect the magical electrical box has failed it's actually wiring loom or a sensor faults so yeah that's it uh thank you for watching cheerio I hope you learned something.